In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox XL in stainless steel and in titanium. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to declare that I paid for the stainless steel version of the Bushbox XL, but Bushcraft Essentials did send me the titanium version for testing and review. I also want to declare that I'm receiving no other compensation for making this video. Okay, so as always, what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll show you how the stoves are assembled. We'll go over the specifications for the stoves. I'll show you the, the accessories that you can purchase for the stoves. And then we'll go over how the stoves are used with wood and a variety of other fuels. So unless you bought one of the optional cases for the Bushbox XL, this is what you're going to receive your stove in when you purchase it. It is a heavy duty cotton canvas sack, which is edged with nylon tape on the outside. On the back, it has a couple of nylon belt loops as well as a D-ring at the top. So not a special case, but a good high quality case and well suited to the purpose it's designed for. Inside the case, of course, is your stove. So let's take the stove out put the case aside. Now, good idea before you start to assemble the stove is to take the two pot rests off and the pot rests are integrated right into the side of the stove. There are projections coming out of the stove that lock them in. You have space for four pot rests and they're quite uniquely attached to the stove. It looks like like it's they're going to fall out, but they don't. And they just work so simply. You just tilt them up a little bit, turn it a little bit, and they'll come right off of their resting place. Yet I have never had one fall out of those spots. All right, the stove assembly, and this is really, you know, the key feature of the Bushbox XL, is you just open it up. And it has two plates that are hinged on the inside, which I'll show you. The inside, you're going to see the fire grate, which is obviously full of holes, but underneath that is the ash pan. The ash pan and fire grate are integrated into the stove. There's no need to take it off and put it on underneath or, or otherwise assemble it. It's there. It's not going to come apart. All right, so there is the base stove. Now, you do have these tote pot rests or trivets, and they have multiple uses, as I'll demonstrate as we go through the operation of the stove. But that's basically it. I'm just going to put the two on top for now, and we'll talk more about them in a second. All right, so... Right, so I have my pot rests on top. Now I'm gonna bring the titanium version into the picture and we're gonna go over the statistics or the specifications for the stoves. And it, the, the sizes are identical. The only difference, of course, is being the materials that the stoves are made from and the weight. So let's go over. Why don't we use the titanium version for this purpose. So the overall height of the Bushbox XL from the floor to the very top is seven and one half inches or 19 centimeters. Its width across, and it is a square, is 5 inches or 12.5 centimeters. Burn chamber depth from the fire grate to the top of the stove is 5.75 inches or 14.5 centimeters. The weight, and here's where they difference, is in the stainless steel one will come in at 1 pound, 6 ounces, or 725 grams, and it is made from a 1 millimeter thick stainless steel. The titanium version is going to come in at 17.6 ounces or 500 grams. The, uh, now, I should point out that while the stainless steel version is completely made from stainless steel, there is some stainless steel on the titanium version. So the two places you're going to find the stainless steel are the pot rests. All pot rests for the XL are made of stainless steel, as is the ash pan on the bottom. So those two pieces are stainless steel. Still, it comes in at just 500 grams or 17.6 ounces. Okay, so those are the specifications for the stoves. Let's take a moment to look at what options or accessories that you can purchase. And I'll also give you my recommendations for which option you may want to go with first. All right, for this part of the video, we're going to use the titanium version and talk about it. Now, the, as I mentioned, the stove comes with two trivets or pot rests that you can use in a variety of ways, as I'll demonstrate in a minute. Now, you can buy package deals where it'll come with a variety of the options already included, but uh, some of the rest of these you can also purchase separate. So what most people will opt for right away is an additional pair of trivets. Again, they're made of stainless steel. Uh, they're a great accessory to have, and that really maximizes some of the versatility that the stove has and you can use. However, for my uses, 
I think the better accessory to buy is the Universal Grate. And I'll show you one in a few minutes, but this can replace a lot of the things that you would use the pot rest trivets for, plus give you other options as well. So there is the Universal Grate. There is also an extended grate for grilling. Now the smaller grate can be used for grilling as well, but the larger grate can be used on top of the stove for grilling as well. In addition, another option that's purchasable is this titanium base plate. And I'll show you how that's used in a second. Now I don't believe this is available in stainless steel but is available in titanium and it acts as both a base for the stove and a means of packaging the stove up to put away in your pack. And the last thing as an option that you can purchase is a leather case and uh, it's a good quality leather case and it's just a nice uh, additional option that you may opt for. It looks great, feels great, and has a nice uh, nice feel to it. All right, well, let's go back to the use of the base plate. So. Let's show it how it is used as a base and why you may even want to consider it. So the plate has slots here and here, and those slots will match up with the feet on the bottom of the stove so that when you insert them, it doesn't like hard lock it in, but it does keep it in position. Now, the value of that is a couple of things. One, it does provide you an, an extra layer of protection from the ground so that any hot coals falling through, and there shouldn't be any really because of the, the ash pan that's integrated into the stove, but a few may fall through from underneath and out the edges. This will catch them. So if you have a surface that you're concerned may be combustible, then this is an extra uh, layer of protection. But the other thing, of course, is that on uneven ground or ground that is soft or muddy or snow, for instance, which would be a really good example, this will provide you some support to keep it from sinking into the earth. So that's how it operates for a base. But as I mentioned, it is also, and this is what I like about putting the stove away, it just collapses up just like that. It does also act as a case for carrying the stove with. So you can see that there are fold over edges on either side and a plate at the end. And to use this as a case, just line it up, make sure that you've got it all lined up the way you want it to go. And sometimes with a little fiddling, make sure you got it going in straight. There, it locks into place and now you're integrated into all into one small packages. And except for any dirt that may be on the front of the stove, and there usually isn't any there, uh, you, you can put this away in your pack without worry about getting any soot all over the inside of your pack. And it adds just a small amount of weight to the total package, which I'll put on the screen now. Okay, so those are the accessories that come with the stove. And again, let me take this out. I'll put it aside and bring out the stainless steel version. My first recommendation as an accessory would be the universal grate because as I'll show you in a minute, it can be used for a variety of things uh, on the stove. However, if you do choose or you would like to have a, an extra set of trivets, then by all means do so. As I mentioned, the sides of the stove will accept four trivets, but there is an option to using trivets that you may want to save a few dollars on, up to you of course. And that is using tent pegs with the stove. So the stove is designed, and I have two stainless steel tent pegs for demonstration purposes. Take off the pot rests. Around the top of the stove, on the front and the back, are four round holes and two on the sides. As well, down the sides are slots, three sets of slots for the uh, uh, pot rest trivets, which will demonstrate their use. But those same slots are also designed to accept the tent pegs. The holes are the same as they are at the top. So you could use these in place of trivets for most of the functions. So they would just slide through front to back. And these stainless steel, tri or stainless steel uh, tent pegs I picked up at our dollar store here in Halifax and just cut them down to a size that was easy, easily packable with the stove. But you can use as many as four in this direction or two in this direction or as many as you want down either side for the various options that you have there. Okay, so those are the specifications for the stove, the accessories for the stove. Now what I want to do is start a discussion around using wood and a number of alternative fuels. 
So let's begin this discussion by talking about using wood with the Bushbox XL, because of course it is a wood stove and that is its intended primary fuel. So there are basically two ways that you can use uh, a fire in the XL. Uh, you can start with your traditional bottom-up burn where you're going to put a small fire in your kindling and tinder and everything in the bottom and then add wood as required in through the feed port. The other option is to take a stack of wood and arrange it vertically inside the stove and then create a top-down burn. Both have uh, are legitimate uses for the stove and they both have their pros and cons. So if you start with a bottom-up burn, you may not get the same even heat through the entire duration of, your, of its use, but that can be a benefit in, in that you get to control the amount of heat. So when you need a lot of heat, perhaps to bring water to a boil quickly, then you can stack as much wood as required. If you want to let the fire to die down so that you have coals for grilling or just for simmering, then that's easier to do. With a vertical stack, it's less work feeding wood in because it's all in there, but you're going to get an even steady and relatively high amount of heat for the entire period of time that that wood is in there until of course it's consumed and you have to add an additional. There is one thing that I want to point out at the request of Bushcraft Essentials, and that is they strongly recommend the use of a Swedish fire torch in their stoves. Now, by Swedish fire torch, we're talking about using a log of maybe four, four and a half, even up to five inches in diameter that is split into four pieces and then placed inside of the stove, either the 90 degree edges into the corners or the round edges into, into the corners. It really doesn't make any difference. And the reason they recommend against that is because a Swedish fire torch can cause uneven heating of the sides of the stove because of course you'll get areas that are intensely hot where the flame is allowed to come out the side of the Swedish fire torch and then cooler on either side of that. That uneven heating can cause warping of the stove, both in stainless steel and in titanium. So I don't know if it happening. It has not happened to me, but then of course I don't find the need to use a Swedish fire torch, but I have no had no issues with warping other than some minor stuff we'll talk about in a little bit, but I've had no issues of warping with the stove, either using it in the traditional feeding in through the top or in through the feed window or even a preload in the top of the stove. Okay, the size of the wood. If you're going to go for a preloaded, I would recommend nothing longer than five inches to give you that three quarter inches gap to the top of the stove so that you have enough room for the smaller fire to uh, begin building and then sinking down into the coals and to give you room for exhaust at the top. You can put in longer pieces than five inches in through the window. I mean, that just swallows that five inch piece up. This is a 10 inch piece and I, I would say 10 to 12 inches, maybe as long as you want to put in the stove through the feed port because any longer than that and it's going to start to drop out. Even with a 10 inch piece, you still have to keep an eye on it because of course as the wood inside the stove is consumed, it gets relatively heavy on the outside and can fall backwards. So, you know, processing wood down to pieces that fit in through the stove uh, is probably the best idea. Just take a little time ahead and get all your wood ready and then four or five inches, you can just pop them in as you need them. And this stove will hold a lot of wood as you can see. Okay, let's move on to using alternative fuels with the stove. So the first alternative fuel we usually think about with wood stoves is alcohol. And the stove we think about most often is the Trangia, or in this case, the Alox knockoff of the Trangia. So the Bush Box XL was designed for use with the Trangia in a couple of different ways. So let me demonstrate. So for the first setup, we're going to use two of the pot stands that came with your stove. And to use them, we're going to use the slots on the sides of the stove. So there are three slots pair of slots on either side of the stove and that gives you options for varying the height of the pot to stove gap. So now I'll just give you a close-up of one of the trivets or pot stands and you'll notice that there are a variety of slots on either side of them and that gives you a variety of ways that you can use it with the stove. So for this setup I'm going to use it through the center slot on the side. Run it through, it'll drop into place. Same thing on the other one. Did I put that in? No, I put it in upside down. Not that it matters, you can use it either way, but you just want both of them through the slots the same way. There we go. All right, so they're dropped into place. Now, with those two bars in place, you can then take your trangia, slide it between the bars, and it will firmly 
hold the transit in place. Now, with the transit in that position, the gap from the burner to the bottom of your pot is just over one and three quarters inches or 4.4 centimeters, giving you a really good, efficient burn, quick to boil time like that. Okay, so obviously it should be, you should note right now that you just use your two trivets or pot stands to accept your transit stove. What are you gonna use on top of the stove to support your pot? Well, obviously if your pot is big enough, then you can just put it right on top of the stove. But if your pot is any smaller, you're gonna want something to support your pot across the uh, top. So one option is to take another two of these if your stove came with four and use them in one of the slots across the uh, top. So I'm gonna use it in the outside of the four slots set up like this so now I have a good support for some larger pots and some smaller pots so in this case my 15 centimeter uh, GSI catalyst will sit on top now it would have sat on top anyway even without the crossbars but not so for my GSI stainless steel glacier mug. This is the same size as a 750 mil mug or a lot of the small pots. That requires something on the stove. So now you can see that it supports well on those two bars uh, set across. All right, so that's one option for setting up the Trangia. Now, what happens if you only purchased or your, your stove only came with two of these trivets and you opted not to purchase additional trivets. Well, if you took my recommendation, one of the things you may have opted for was to get the universal grate. And the universal grate can be used in the stove three different ways. And I'll start by showing you this one right now and how it can be used with the tarantula. So you'll notice on either side of the universal grate that there are some small tabs projecting out as well as some notches here. The notches there are just to make it easier to put in and out of the stove. The tabs, line up with notches in the sides of the stove or the front and back. So on the front, you'll see two small little notches right there. On the back, there are a set of slots that are equally right across from them. To use this, you would drop it into the stove so that you have lined up those two of those tabs with those front notches, and then you can just drop it into place. And you can see it will set in just below the feed port down a good distance. Now, take your trangia, drop it in, and the same thing again, the pot gap from the top of the burner to the bottom of your pot is one and three quarters inches, 4.4 centimeters. Now, if you only had two of your uh, pot trivets come with this, you can set them on top to support your pot. So that's one option. I'll show you a couple of other ways that grate is useful with the stove in a minute. The other option is, if you didn't buy uh, an extra set of these pot gaps, is to take your stainless steel tent pegs and run them through the holes on the sides as well. So as I mentioned, each of these slots has holes in the center sized to accept a pretty good size tent peg. Now, uh, I did have to play with it a little bit to see what the ideal tent peg was. I do have some titanium tent pegs that are quite small, and they were too small to support the tarantula. It, it, it was just too loose between them, and, and you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. Uh, you can get a slightly bigger tent peg than this one through, but then I found it was too tight to support the tarantula. So now, with this size, and I will put a note in the show notes what the diameter of these tent pegs are. I just don't know it off the top of my head right now. You can see it also supports the trangia right in the same position. So if you have those tent pegs, now you can use your original two trivets on top of the stove as you would need to. All right, so that's using the stove with alcohol. What about some of the alternative fuels? So after alcohol, probably the first alternative fuel pe most people think about is solid fuels or gel fuels. So solid fuel being like an Esbit tab. And yes, the stove is designed for use with Esbit as well. So you can use this. Primarily, there's one method that's recommended for that, and that is with the universal grate dropped into that position I showed you with alcohol. Let me do that now. Line up the two tabs, drop it into position, and now you can place your solid fuel on top of that. Now I have an esbit here that I'll demonstrate with. You can place the esbit right on the center, and you get, well, it's actually quite a distance up. It's about three, two and a half, almost three inches from the esbit tab to the top. Um, 
Is that ideal? It's hard, it's hard to know without a lot of experience. I don't like using Esbit very much, but uh, it, it, it is functional with these stoves. My experience is to get the most from your Esbit tab, though, you don't want to lay it right directly on top of the universal grate because of all the air holes. You really want it cupped in something to keep it from flowing out or burning too fast. Uh, one thing you could use is a small metal bowl like that, I guess. You can put that inside and put your Esbit inside of that. That'll work. An alternative to a metal bowl, and this is I've used, and it does help, is just take a piece of aluminum foil and just fold up a small little cup or dish that you can set in the center. A solid place piece of steel would also work in there, and that works to hold your esbit. Um, alternatively, there are a couple of other things that you can use. This is something I've been experimenting with. This is the Fire Dragon. It's a gel, a solid gel, if that makes sense. It's a very... Uh, yeah, just a solid gel is the best way to describe it. Very clean burning, made from uh, ethyl alcohol, and it works really well, burns a long time, burns very hot, and you can set that. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't recommend setting it right on the grate, but if you have that little dish or some aluminum foil, you, then you can set it in that, in the stove, to hold it. Alternative to the gel is the actual the fire dragon gel itself. So the gel, you can just pour in the amount you're gonna need into a little bowl, or again, into a little aluminum foil, and you can use those for as an alternative fuel. Uh, other alternative fuels, well, here's one I don't use very often, but you know, it does have some benefit, and that is chafing fuels like Sterno. So I have two types here. These are both from a brand called Magic Flame, and uh, one has a wick in it, and the other one is just the open gel alcohol on the inside. Both of those will also sit down in on that universal grate. The pot gap is closer to the top, but both of them will work. Now, they don't produce a high heat. It, they produce a good steadying heat because, of course, that's what chafing fuels are for, so that you can do a lot of simmering, a lot of cooking on that without a lot of concern about burning or uh, your whatever you have in your pot or your pan. So those are an alternative fuel that you can use. All right, what's next? All right, the next fuel that I prefer to use more than most, almost any other fuel is wood pellets. And wood pellets will work very well in the Bushbox XL as long as you have that universal grate. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I remove the universal grate, the fire grate inside has huge holes. Uh, you're you're going to lose most of your pellets down onto the ash pan and it just won't work properly. So, But if you do have the universal grate, you can use it in two positions. This will drop all the way in to the bottom. There are slots in the bottom where you can drop it right in, covering over the fire grate. And now you can get in as much as... Uh, three cups of wood pellets in there. Now, I haven't gone with the whole three cups of wood pellets in my tests, but I have used one and a half cups of pellets, and I'll show you the position for that. So to use one and a half cups of pellets, put it back into the position that we had it for alcohol. Use. Takes a second to line the tabs up. There we go. And then drop it into place. Now, with the, the universal grate in that position, I can get one and a half cups of wood pellets in there. Now, mind you, it's close to the, to the bottom of the feed port, so you're going to want the pellets kind of pushed to the back, but it will work very well with wood pellets in that position, and one and a half cups will last me uh, 35 minutes on average, depending on, on the weather and, and that types of thing. So, uh, yeah, one and a half cups will last about 35 minutes, so that's a pretty good use of fuel. Uh, now, while we're here and we're talking about wood pellets and the use of the universal grate, let me just show you, of course, the last use for the universal grate, which is as a grill. And this will apply to this one, and I might as well bring out the extended grill plate at the same time. So on the front and the back of the stove, there are notches that have a little bit of an L shape, and that's for locking in the universal grate and the extended grate on top, or the universal grill, sorry. So you place it on top of the stove, those little tabs will then drop into the, uh, those slots and move it one way or the other. It doesn't necessarily have to be moved into the locking position on either side in order for it to be secure, but it works well now on top for grilling, obviously. And the same thing can be said of the larger one. Now with the larger one, the little tabs on the edges are offset just a tiny bit, so you're gonna get it hanging out over one side a little further than the other. 
and there we go, it drops right into place very easily right there. Uh, that works out very well. Now, the other thing is both of these are designed to be used with one of the trivets for putting them on and off. So if you notice again, the trivets have slots on the edges and one slot is deeper than the other. That slot is ideal for take, setting the grill down on top and dropping it into position just to give it a little turn to get it out. And if you're not quite set into place, you can just move everything around. There we go. Okay, so that drops into place. Same thing with the extended grate. In this case, it has two slots inside. So you can do the same thing. Use your trivet to pick up your grill, line it up with the slots on top, drop it into place, and if need to, you can do a little manipulation. Sometimes it's required just to get the thing to drop into place, boom, and then it drops in. So you're ready to go. Okay, so that is just using the grill, the extended grill, and the universal grill or grate, and using it with one of the pot stand trivets for manipulating. Oh, one more thing you can use these pot stand trivets for. So maybe you're set up in a position and the wind changes or it starts to rain and you need to get in under cover, and, but you already have a fire going in the stove and you wanna move the stove. Again, take two of these and again, using that longer slot in the end of it, grab it from the side. You can use any of the slots from this. You just slide it in, slot up, and you can lock in and you can pick up and move your stove wherever you need to. Okay, are there any other fuels that you can use in the Bushbox XL? Well, and after pellets, one fuel that I like to use, at least here at home, I don't often take it in the woods with me, is charcoal. And charcoal is a great fuel for grilling because of course that's what it's designed to do. So I experimented with the XL to see how much charcoal I could get in here effectively and I can get 25 briquettes. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of charcoal. And 25 briquettes in a, in a stove this size will produce a lot of heat and you can do a lot of extended grilling with that kind of heat. You can boil water easily, you can do all all the cooking you need to. So maybe you're somewhere where you don't have wood, access to wood or wood pellets and you want to do some cooking, maybe and it's in a picnic park, then by all means use this as a barbecue. It works very well. Okay, so I have shown you all the uh, alternative fuels in addition to wood. The only thing left to do now, there's one more fuel that I do want to show you, and this may not be available to everyone, but it does work with the stove. So again, why not show it to you? Let me set up for that. All right, the last fuel that I want to show use with is, of course, a gas canister, a butane stove. And this is a knockoff of the Alex butane adapter. This one is made by a company called Bulin. Uh, it works exactly the same way. Uh, same way. I like it. It's quite high quality. Uh, the trick to getting this installed in the stove is to, again, set the stove up with your two trivets uh, in the center slots on the sides, but I found it's a little easier if you start by running your feed through the window before you set your second trivet in place. Uh, it's easier because otherwise you'd have to run the feed under the trivet and back out through the window. Now I can run the trivet through, lock it into place, and snap it down. And now you can see the stove set up inside in the same place you would use your Trangia. All right, so that's using it with a butane stove. Um, I haven't used it with any other butane stoves or any other adaptations to it. I would not recommend using the canister stove with the canister inside. You, you have to use it with some type of an external feed because, of course, it's going to get too hot inside of the stove otherwise. All right, there's only one thing left to do with our stove, and that's to get this outside and do some demonstrating.